Mason Voth, Drew Galloway here from K-State Online with you. And if you're hearing from us, probably either means one of two things. Somebody died or K-State got a commitment. <laughs> we'll never come to you with with, with death notes. Uh, that was just – I always think about whenever I get like a text from a family member or something and I'm hearing from them, like, what could this be about? Either somebody died or they're wanting to talk about K-State with me. That really are the only two things that comes about. Uh, fortunately for you guys, nobody has died that we know of might be getting a little bit of a rebirth of K-State football. I mean, back-to-back -back nine win seasons now, back-to-back -back years finishing in the top 25. And now all of a sudden you're hauling in a big time receiver out of the transfer portal. Now I know some of you might go, well, oh, Dante Cephas. Okay. Whatever. He was at Kent state and then he was at Penn state, but did nothing at Penn state. There's a lot of context that needs to be put into this, but Drew, you know me well enough at this point. I don't get really all that excited to a high level for a lot of things. This was the receiver that I was most attracted to of the realistic possibilities for K-State in the portal. This is a this is a very significant pickup for them. So I'll let you get your Dante Cephas thoughts out there and uh, the news and notes here before we dive in and give a little bit more context to why you shouldn't just look at the Penn State numbers and you know go, oh, man, this guy, really? Big deal? Whatever. King, Keegan Johnson 2.0. No. Look, I still hold out hope for Keegan Johnson, but I think Dante Cephas could provide a more immediate impact. And I think like even if you're just trying to compare what the peak of Keegan Johnson versus the peak of Dante Cephas is, the ceiling for Cephas is much higher. Yeah, so some news and notes with Dante Cephas. He visited K State over uh, the weekend. Uh, last weekend, he was actually at the UCF basketball game with uh, Coach Middleton and Connor Riley and Matt Wells. Um, so the interesting thing is Dante Cephas is a two-time transfer, but will be a grad transfer, so we don't have to go through any of that nonsense that's going on. Yeah. Uh, but he was at Kent State, Kent State before and was coached by Matthew Middleton. So this is one where you would think that from the outside of like, oh, he didn't do anything at Penn State. Like, is he not like power five level? You would think that with uh, having the connection to Matthew Middleton, that Middleton would know if he was going to be able to play at this level. And this relationship with Matthew Middleton uh, kind of put K State over the edge and UCLA and uh, Pittsburgh, I believe, were the two teams that were really kind of vying for Cephas and trying to get in. And K State shut the door. I mean, he visited K State, and that was it. And he was, and we've been hearing that he was getting close to committing, and now it's done. And this is a big time addition. And I mean, we'll we'll get into it in a little bit. But in the on three industry uh, rankings in the transfer portal, uh, Dante Cephas is the number sixty three player available and number eleven wide receiver. And I mean, it, we've been kind of waiting for a splash out wider at the wide receiver position. And now it looks like it's happening in the form of Dante Cephas. And I mean, the, he is from Pittsburgh. So to not even get to a point where like he could visit Pitt is a big time win for K-State on the recruiting trail. Well, and, and just go back even to last year and look at where, you know, Dante Cephas had some serious momentum when he left Kent State to go to Penn state because he had a massive 2021 yes. uh, at Kent state. That's, that's the year that jumps out to everybody He had 82 catches over 1200 yards, uh, nine touchdowns. Like he was huge in that year for, for Kent state the next year, still really good in terms of like total numbers. He actually averaged more on, on his catches. He was 15.1 the year before 15 and a half the next year. But the touchdowns went down, the yards went down, the catches went down because he, he missed some time that season. And then he goes to Penn State, and, and you know, Drew Aller is not a bad quarterback. I'm not going to say that. But, look, Penn State, it's the Big Ten. The offense is seriously lacking in a lot of ways. And not only is it Big Ten offense, it's a Big Ten offense that fired their offensive coordinator after the season – and had to come to the state of Kansas to try and get their next guy. And one of them said, nope, Colin Klein that was. And Andy Kotelnicki stepped right in. And I would imagine if Dante Cephas got to play in a, at Penn State under Andy Kotelnicki, 
those numbers look a lot more like Kent State. Maybe not to the same extent because obviously the MAC is a different ball game than the Big Ten. Although I know somewhere Cole Manbeck's going not so fast. Uh, but this is like this is a significant deal, and I think you have to add that context to what Cephas means when he comes to K State and what went down the last three years and trying to make sense of it all. Yeah, I mean he was amazing in 2021, and it's crazy that that uh, this team and it's why I've been so high on Matthew Middleton uh, at K State is uh, that that team had uh, Tez Walker as well who ended up going from Kent State to North Carolina, and it was part of the uh, kind of rallying of movement of why is Tez Walker not playing, but that's a whole yeah. different different issue. Uh, Which last year, if you look at last year's portal rankings, Cephas was ranked higher than Tez yeah. Walker. So, and, and think of how good Tez Walker was once he actually started playing. And, and like the, there is a lot of upside that you can really like about Dante Cephas. He's, not the tallest at 6'1", but he's big for a K-State wide receiver, which is saying something. And um, what what I really like is his ability to take the top off the defense. He does suffer from drops from time oh, to time, oh, no. which which isn't like exactly the best thing that you want to hear. But... Well, then he sounds perfect for the posters of K-State online. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see kind of how that goes. And the other thing about like the Penn State thing, and I, I've touched on this uh, with some of my friends that have said, like, well, why wasn't he very good at Penn State? You said Drew Aller is fine. I think Drew Aller is really bad. Okay. He, I was he, trying to be nice to him. I mean, I've he, been known to uh, over-exaggerate just how, uh, how, how bad some guys are. I mean, the, the numbers would back up that he was okay this year. He wasn't – I mean, he wasn't some world beater. Now, again, you have to take into consideration – Outside of Michigan and Ohio State, who did he really face? And that is a fair question to ask. And Penn State's offense just was not good throwing the ball at all. Like, the, yeah, they averaged 215 yards passing this season on almost 40 attempts. Yeah. It's so like you look at that and just the raw data and you kind of wonder, huh, this is probably why they're changing the guard at offensive coordinator. Uh, but like it's. It's a fun addition because you can really think of what he, what Cephas will do with Jace Brown and Keegan Johnson and potentially another transfer wide receiver that mm. we'll kind of get into uh, if that kind of trends case its way. But what's e exciting to me is that you really saw that the wide receiver position was a big time priority by K-State in the entire offseason that they wanted to get somebody in to come in and be like a proven wide receiver one. And we, you finally got it. And the other thing that I'll add in with this, uh, the lack of production at Penn State, and I've also said this, is like, if he was good at Penn State, he wouldn't be in the portal. He'd just go to the NFL. Yeah. Like, him having kind of a rough season at Penn State is the reason that he's available. Yeah. So it, it ended up playing well. And, I mean, they will have him in a good position because – Matthew Middleton will know exactly what he needs to do with Dante Cephas. All right. Let's uh, one other thing. And I mean, I think this is good that you, you mentioned that they made receiver a priority. Look, and maybe this is bare minimum expectation. And maybe this is still a lot of me thinking <laughs> like flashbacks and nasty ones to like the Snyder regime. But in theory, they did not have to make receiver a priority in the portal where you look around and you could tell yourself, well, we have Jace Brown coming back. We have Jaden Jackson coming back. We have Keegan Johnson coming back. We, you know, we have a guy like Trey Spivey that's young. We have some other young guys that maybe you could get into this thing. And yeah, if we add somebody, we add somebody. But they've worked hard to add somebody to elevate what is a weapon for Avery Johnson and what the ceiling of this team can be next year. So leading off of that, how would you, as it is currently constructed, anticipate K-State's wide receiver depth looking next, next year? Or, or if you're trying to, you know, break down like in order distribution of targets, where are you going one through whatever now with the way the roster currently sits after adding Cephas, knowing that there could be another uh, piece of movement coming? So with adding Cephas, I think 
he will probably get a lot of the targets along with Jace Brown. I think that those will probably be the top two. And then probably Garrett Oakley and Keegan Johnson are probably you know, like in your next tier of three and four. And then you kind of see where you're at. And is one of the young players ready? DJ Giddens was very good out of the backfield catching the ball this season. So that's probably your next tier. But it's really exciting. And like like you said, and I said too, like K-State didn't have to add a transfer wide receiver if they didn't want to. But they're trying to maximize Avery Johnson. And this is a big move because Avery Johnson doesn't want to be known as just a runner. He wants to be able to split, to sling the ball around. And we, we saw it in the bowl game where they probably needed another receiver because you could see in the bowl game where it wasn't always crisp in the passing game. Mm-hmm. And see if this adds a, a proven guy that can go and be your wide receiver one or two. Because, I I mean, I I wouldn't rule out Jace Brown probably getting the, the majority of the targets even. Because I think that he can take that big of a jump in his connection with Avery Johnson already is such a big uh, factor and a key factor for him. And it, it, what I really like about Cephas too is with the size, he probably lets Jace Brown or Keegan Johnson play in the slot where they're probably better off. Mm -hmm. And I I think that I'd rather have Jace Brown in the slot because that's where he played in the bowl game and where he really seemed to thrive. So it it lets you kind of build your roster the way that you want it to be and not have somebody smaller playing on the outside. Yeah, Yeah. no, I I think that all makes a lot of sense. And uh, it's, you know, moving in a good direction for K-State. But this this is a really good pickup for them. Pretty significant in what they've done, and it's just another weapon for Avery Johnson and also your now offensive coordinators, Connor Riley and Matt Wells, to play around with next year and uh, see what options they, they kind of have there. So that is the book on Dante Cephas and his addition to K-State. Obviously, the Wildcats still going to continue to be active in the portal throughout who knows how long. I mean, the rest of this month and then maybe, you know, the the spring always flares up with some different guys that you might have to kick the tires on. So anytime that K-State picks up a significant commit out of the portal, you'll find a video like this right here at K-State Online. So make sure you're subscribed both to kstateonline.com and also to the YouTube channel to stay locked in for all that. Thanks to Drew Galloway. I'm Mason Voth. That'll do it for us. Dante Cephas, the newest receiving threat. For Avery Johnson and the Wildcats, thanks for watching and listening to K-State Online.